where you are, the university campus provides an opportune moment for you to be a true ambassador of Islam. And for many people who don't know, Saudi Arabia is not the largest Muslim country. The largest Muslim country is Indonesia. And why did the people of Indonesia become Muslims? They didn't become Muslims because a Muslim army went there. They only became Muslims because those who went there exhibited good character. And in Ghana, there's no story of an army coming here. But we've got Dagombes, Eves, Fantis, you know, Yoruba people who originally uh, were born here and many other tribes embracing Islam. And two or three decades ago, they saw us as watchmen. Even though someone may see that as derogatory, because now they don't say watchmen, they say security. But when you put somebody in trust of your property, it means that person is an honest person. So even in our movies today, the watchmen are called by Muslim or nothing names even though somebody may find it a bit derogatory, but I think it's a feather in a cap that people trust us with their property. So while you are on University of Ghana campus, how do you become a quintessential example of what the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said he was sent to do? The Prophet said, I have been sent to do one and one only thing, that I will perfect virtuous character. How virtuous is your character? And what can you do to make Islam and Muslims look good on this campus? Number one, I'll look at your relationship with non-Muslims. And we are a very fortunate country in our diversity in terms of culture, ethnicity, and religion. But university education offers us the opportunity to be under the same roof and in the same space with people with different orientations. How nice and tolerant are you as a Muslim with your roommates? Some roommates can really get on your nerves. I remember when we were here, there were a lot of things that were happening. But it is the character of a Muslim that you tolerate the negative attitude of another person. And please, we are a tight-knit country. Don't create any segregation as if we are different because of the diversity we have. Number two, having been good to your roommates, that is the best you can do for Islam. You are members of various study groups. Try your best as a Muslim. A Muslim shouldn't be dull academically. Your GPA should be really high. And whenever there is any public show of intellectualism, don't lag behind. And so are you the group leader in your study group? If you are not, work extra hard to be the leader. And when you are a step ahead of other group members, don't make them feel bad. Try to carry them along. Some people are naturally very slow readers. So please don't act all bossy. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the most humble human being that ever lived. Today, when you are given a small appointment, you go to the car park, there is a reservation for the CEO or the minister. And the kind of car you even use tells you are the boss. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would sit in the midst of his very regular or ordinary companions. And if you were not told that was Prophet Muhammad, you wouldn't know. So please, lower your wings. Be a humble person, even though you are better academically than others. The third point, in terms of our relationship with non-Muslims, is the abuse of the terminology, inshallah. Inshallah means, if Allah wills. And it has become a catchphrase that is used by even non-Muslims out of admiration for the promises we keep. But today, sadly, when a Muslim tells you the study group discussion is at 10 a.m., you say, Muhammad, are you sure you can make it on a Saturday at 10 a.m.? When Muhammad is not sure, he tells you, inshallah. 
So if he doesn't show up, he said, but I told you, inshallah. So Allah didn't, you know, permit that I would come. And so when you say inshallah, you are tying your integrity to the integrity of Islam. So please be sure when you make a commitment by using the word inshallah, so that Islam will be attractive to the people around. Another thing I know with being a student, a Muslim student, is that some of us are at very low wavelengths in terms of Islamic or Quranic education. Some people have the compliment, like this beautiful reciter, a brother in blue, who came and recited the Quran. But if I'm to test other people, maybe when you even open Juzo or Amma, the person cannot read. So how do you help Islam while you're on campus? Don't see people who can't read the Quran the way you do as less of Muslims. We have that problem wherever you go in the campuses. And they say these people, they are the Imanus people. They have all the Iman because they can speak a little Arabic or they can recite the Quran. But those of us who can't recite the Quran are seen as less of human beings or less of Muslims. Instead of doing that, it is important that we create avenues and opportunities to teach people who didn't have the complement of learning the Quran in their formative years. So during Fajr, after Fajr prayers, just before going to class, around 7.30, if you have 30 minutes between 5.30 to 6 a.m. before you take your shower and freshen up for class, get somebody, a sister, who reads better than you, or a brother who knows better than you to be teaching you. So you come out of this university with a certificate and a better Muslim. And then there's the issue of hijab. I have been with Jimsa all my adult life, and this is the final point I'm making. In fact, when I was in high school, I was a president, and I didn't know anything about hijab uh, at that time because it was a boys' school, and we didn't have that challenge. But throughout, when I became a regional imam, I became national imam, and I engaged you know, university campuses across the country. Anytime there was a Jimsa meeting or a conference or a convention, and there are sisters who come without a headscarf, like eyebrows are raised. It looks like, did you lose your way? Instead of making people feel like they are the odd ones out, the best or ideal situation is when a woman dresses in a modest way by putting on the hijab. But I would urge our sisters who are hijabis not to see other sisters who are yet to learn and become confident by putting on hijab as less of Muslims. The clothing is only a mark of modesty. But if you are not able to do it and you are still modest, it doesn't take you out of the fold of Islam. So the message I am preaching to you today and leaving with you as we discuss this important theme of what can we do for Islam. Those in the corporate world working in the offices, they have ways they can do a lot of service to Islam. But as a student at the university level, please be nice to your roommates, be nice to people you study with, don't abuse the use of inshallah, when you learn the Quran and you can read it well, help other Muslims who cannot read. And when you are a hijabi, encourage other sisters to be hijabis rather than seeing them as less of Muslims. Thank you so much. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.